Hello, good day. Let me now have this brief discussion about exercise number one. Exercise number one is done by you in statistical methods in the social sciences and social statistics. So in our Google Classrooms classwork, particularly in the form, the exercise that you did lets you relate statistics with research. The concepts learned from this exercise will bridge you through the statistical calculations you need to apply in your research papers, foremost of which is your thesis. The particular exercise discussed about the paradigm as a worldview. It's like how we look at the complexity of the world. Research is usually being done within two broad paradigms, positivism and naturalism. For the social scientists, referring positivism as the modernism, while naturalism as the postmodernism. Now, these research paradigms have appropriate research methods and research tools. So for positivism, the appropriate methods is the quantitative method that use the research tools such as questionnaire and interview schedule. Whereas naturalism use the qualitative research method and the question and interview guide in the collection of data when the research is already on field. Now, questionnaire and interview schedule have the convenience of being left with the research population or the sample or the respondents. So you can draft your questionnaire and interview schedule in such a way that is answerable objectively by agreement or disagreement, yes or no, or there is gradation to the agreement like strongly agree, disagreement, strongly disagree, something like that. The difference between the two is that questionnaire is you can leave it with a respondent and the respondent will answer the questionnaire. You can come back later and pick up the questionnaire. Whereas the interview schedule is used during interview wherein you are face to face with a respondent. So it is the researcher or the interviewer who will record the responses of the respondents on the interview schedule or the research instrument. Now, it, with naturalism or qualitative, the guide is just used. So it's just a guide. It's not so detailed questions and it's usually used on a face-to-face -face basis. You can just leave it with a respondent. For quantitative, there is the asking of the question, how many? Qualitative, ask the question, why? So this is for the purpose of generalization or for predictions. So with quantitative, you can engage to as many respondents as you can, depending on the scientific result of your sampling, which we will learn later. In qualitative, you are going to obtain depth of information through answering the question, why? Now, it depends on the research topic the appropriateness of what to use, quantitative or qualitative. The topic, for example, about the widow's experience uh, as an outcome of Marawi siege, then you don't need a lot of widows. You can use qualitative to obtain depth of information about the experience of that widow. Whereas, if you're going to study about internet news, among online learners this time of pandemic, you can engage a lot uh, in terms of sample. There is research methods flexibility. The two paradigms, positivism and naturalism, may cross boundaries, which means that positivists sometimes engage in qualitative studies, while naturalists sometimes collect quantitative information. Okay, so there is that synergistic method, quantitative, qualitative. There is a supplemental case study to a survey, for example. 
So a survey is quantitative, while the case study is qualitative. And the supplementation of qualitative data on the quantitative research will give a more holistic viewpoint to the researcher about the topic at hand. Also for quantitative researchers, we gather empirical evidence rooted in objective reality. By objective, there is no bias, no personal opinion, just facts. Empirical evidence is when you are going to observe, you are going to gather data through the use of uh, senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch, or smell. And it's just factual. Quantitative researchers use deductive reasoning. Uh, it's from general to particular to generate hunches that are tested in the real world. That's why the data analysis of quantitative research deal much with the statistics so that later there may be generalizations that can be made. So they typically move in an orderly and systematic fashion. So from the definition of a problem and the selection of concepts on which to focus through the design of the study and collection of information to the solution of the problem. So from start to finish, it's really on a step-by-step -step process. The examples of empirical observations would be someone's pimple, you can see it through your sense of sight, the heart rate after you jog in place that can be counted, your waistline after half a year of being in COVID-19 enforced to stay home directive that can also be measured through a tape measure. And so, oh, these are examples of empirical, we're in uh, just factual, objective observations, nothing subjective. Hence, a facial grimace as pain indicator, which is uh, there in that particular exercise is not an empirical observation. Pain is a subjective information. Only the person experiencing the pain truly knows of the pain, its scale, and its specific location. A person may have 7 over 10 pain scale, but not, has no facial grimace. Okay? So, it's not uh, an indicator because what if the face is really always uh, grimacing? It's just normal. That's why you are going to ask the person about the pain, the location of the pain, if it's in abdominal area, in which quadrant of the abdomen. Only the person who has the pain can tell you that.